Hello, hello. We will now be beaching our 45 foot sailboat. This boat is a little bit special. It has the capability to do so, but we have never done it before. First, we need to get to a suitable spot and we have chosen a tiny little bay that's in front of us now. We need to get in there first through the tricky entrance and then we're gonna see what the next steps are. Surprise, surprise! It turns out that beaching your sailboat for the first time ever during the winter in a remote bay in Alaska is a little bit difficult. Here we are getting into the bay that we chose and if you look closely there's a few rocks lurking underneath the water. We had instructions on how to enter this bay but the instructions were not entirely correct so yes that was a little bit sketchy. Sketchy enough that once we had set anchor we went to check out the entrance to make sure that we could also make it out when we wanted to. So this is where we came through and there is a reef over there but then we went through these rocks and obviously it was high tide now it's like half half tide I think it probably was pretty close With that out of the way we got another big surprise Yeah, it's winter and yes, we are in Alaska, so of course it started snowing. Who would have thought? So we sat a few days to wait out the storm. After those few days, the weather cleared up, but now we had a new problem. We've come to check the possible site for beaching the boat, and unfortunately it's starting to freeze here. Uh, there's a, an area here that's about the size of like two soccer fields where it froze overnight and um, part of it is so thick that we couldn't row through with the dinghy so we're gonna have to see what happens because it's gonna be cold the next couple of nights as well we want to make sure that if we come in here we don't get frozen shut we need to be able to make it out as well So what do you think? <laughs> well, I don't know, it's difficult to say when the water is so high. But yeah, it would be a bit unfortunate to freeze in here. <laughs> so Yeah. But I think that now it's gonna be cold only for a few days. Yeah, here on the shore there's less ice than out there because um, of the tides, you know. This shore is... Uh, there's no water here during low tide, so the actual ice flow is like out there. Here it's actually not too bad. Also, um, there's more like pebbles and small rocks here than I thought or hoped there would be. So we will have to come back at low tide and check this area carefully. We don't want to um, beach the boat where there's a lot of big rocks. Anyway, let's go and get some water for our shower. Yeah. We need more water. Before we go on the water mission, I just want to remind you of this limited edition print run that I am selling. These prints are only available until the end of the year. The prices start at $99 and these ship worldwide at very reasonable rates. You also get free shipping if you order two or more prints. So these are only gonna be available for a couple more weeks. Go and check out the store by clicking the link either in the video description or up at the top. Mm. 
mitä luulet, että onko vettä siellä? On varmaan, mutta varmaan vähän jäässä. Right now in the winter, especially because oh there's a deer over there. There's a deer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a deer on the shore, but it's way far away. Anyway, um, we are trying to stretch our water reserves on the boat because we have around 100 gallons of water and we want want it to last for several weeks. So we are just fetching some water, but now in the winter the problem is. And that uh, the rivers start freezing and well it seems like the bay here is frozen as well. So we will see if, if we get any fresh water or if it's all frozen. This here is our professional water catchment system and the ice here by the way is a prime example of pancake ice or what you call the pancake ice so you have these pancakes floating around but then when the weather um, is calm it's gonna form a continuous ice sheet they're gonna bind up and freeze together all right, there is some water here. Lots of water, actually. Okay, guys, I'm back on the beach here. And it is now low tide, but it's also 11 p.m. So I'm just checking out the beach and uh, the problem is, well, as you can see, it's all frozen. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'm just clearing a spot for us to use over here. Just checking, trying to make sure that there's no big rocks and if there's any big bumps here, break the ice here. Rocks like this, you know, it's I don't think it's gonna like damage the boat. You know, there's some fairly soft sand underneath. So if the boat sits on top of this, it's gonna you know bury into the sand and I'm just gonna get rid of this this just to make sure. If you were to tell me that this all seems a little bit stupid, then I I wouldn't be able to tell you that you are wrong. You're probably right. This doesn't seem so wise, but uh, this is what we're gonna be doing <laughs> this time. The saga continues. We are back here on the beach and uh, <laughs> we've decided not to try and come in today because the ice is getting so thick. I don't want to have to come through here and scrape the paint and bottom paint on that. So we will wait until tomorrow or day over tomorrow when there is a warm front coming in and I'm pretty sure this is all gonna just melt off. For now though, we've marked the spot where we want to have the boat. So this shovel is there and then this pile of rocks and when we, when I come in and I align those with each other then this is the spot where we want to be. Over there where there's a stick, there is a nasty rock over there. And there's a few rocks in there in the riverbed but over here we've made sure that it's all nice and soft at least somewhat so we mitä mahdollisuuksia annat onnistumiselle no it's okay 
Toivottavasti ei jopa onnistuta, en tiedä mitä se tapahtuu. So if you didn't guess it already, the plan is to drive the boat onto the sand slash small rocks when uh, the tide is not quite at its peak but when it's come down from the peak a little bit already so when the tide is going down we'll drive the boat here and then you know you have around six i don't know you're gonna have like six seven eight hours to work on the boat while the tide goes all the way down and then when it comes back up the boat is going to be floating free again of course you need to take check the tide charts and make sure that the next tide or at least if not the next then the one after that is going to be as high or higher than the tide that you that you used to um, get onto the beach because uh, it's a little bit unfortunate if you if you come to the beach when it the tide is at its peak and then due to natural fluctuations you know sometimes it might be a month or two that the high tide is just lower each day and uh, then you'd be stuck here for a long time and you don't you don't really want that good morning so the low pressure did come in and brought a lot of rain and melted all the ice so now we are ready to go. Today it's low tide at um, 4.30 p.m. It is noon right now. So the tide is going down rapidly and uh, this is our time to head to the shore. We have prepared our stern anchor here, ready to drop. I have flaked the line here so it runs freely. Pretty exciting to take six, I don't know, 14 or 15 tons of a boat to the shore, but we have to learn how to do this because at some point we might have to do this, make some repairs or something, and it's a useful skill to have. So let's go. We have a touchdown. So I just have the gear forward right now and we are touching the bottom here a little bit. And this is exactly where we want it to be. Pile of rock and then Sohvi's avalanche shovel over there. Rock that we were afraid of is over there. Here on the other side as well, there's the other rock that we didn't want to end up on. The tides are just such an interesting phenomenon that have a huge effect on the local nature and the wildlife. It was pretty cool to try and use the tides to our advantage like this. And now we wait. The water is dropping rapidly. And of course it started draining like crazy. Absolutely awful weather. The tidal difference in this part of Alaska is around 5 meters or 16 feet. We are getting ready to work now because we can soon see the whole bottom. And the rudder as well is getting exposed. Now the boat definitely will not move anymore. So even if there is a big gust of wind or something, it won't move. What I'm a little bit afraid of is that if we get a lot of wind from there, which is possible with the weather we are having right now. I know it's flat calm, like completely calm in here, but on the other side of the hill, uh, other side of the hills, it's actually windy. 
So if we get pushed onto this shore here, especially as the tide starts to come up, then that's not gonna be good. So we really need to make sure that that doesn't happen. are not looking too bad especially considering that the boat has been in the water for over a year now without any washing there is some slime here at the bottom but it comes off with very light scrubbing so i call that a success especially because we are using um, one of these more ecologically friendly anti-fouling paints so it doesn't have any copper and so on it's very light on um, things that are harmful to the environment so this is pretty good here this black stuff here is from when we were in a harbor and there was a storm that uh, was pinning our boat like this and the water in the harbor was really oily and we were like tilted like this so I think that's the oily water there at the back you can see our rudder um, and that is why you have to be very careful when you are beaching the boat because uh, you you will soon see, soon see that the rudder is just this much above the ground so if you have a rock there and the rudder is resting on top of a rock that's not good that's our rear dagger board there that's like the specialty of this boat and that's our propeller and anodes we're gonna check those later when we have a little bit less water. For now though I'm gonna continue scrubbing this side. I have been appointed these brushes. We have a toilet brush and a <laughs> and what do you call this? Just a normal brush that you use for sweeping the streets. We've been looking at the weather forecast and we've now decided that uh, we need to do this all within just one tide cycle because next night it might get really windy. So when the tide comes up it's gonna be dark but we will still need to get out of here so that's gonna be exciting. But now what's also exciting is the aft section of the boat. This is where we are gonna really check and make sure that things are fine and hopefully they are so what we need to check is the anodes of course just to make sure that um, we still have some and as you can see these anodes have barely eroded so that's a good sign that's the hull anodes the propeller and as you can see some of the anti-fouling paint has disappeared but that's fine this is a feathering propeller, just making sure that it works as it should and it looks like it does. I'm going to fill it with uh, grease as well. There's a grease nipple that you can use to fill it with grease. And then the anodes on the propeller, this one has eroded a little bit. Also on the shaft has eroded a little bit. But other than that, looks pretty good. Then the rear dagger board, everything looks fine. The rudder definitely is um, dirty. It has probably gotten more sunlight than the other parts of the boat. And as you can see, oh well, maybe you can't, but it's just, there's just a little bit between the rudder and the ground. Now let's see, it doesn't, the rudder doesn't move, the bearing is good. And the same here with the propeller bearing is good.
So you put enough grease that it starts coming out here at the stem of the prop blade. And then you move the propellers around a little bit. And then you add some grease. You just completely fill the whole thing with grease basically. And the anodes here, I'm just gonna scrape them. Just to make sure that they are exposed to seawater. And these here are actually aluminum anodes, so they are actually lower down in the galvanic scale than zinc. So this is an aluminum alloy. It's not the same aluminum as what our hull is made of. Our hull is also aluminum. Um, but uh, the aluminum anodes here are actually more effective than the zinc anodes. People just don't understand it because they are called aluminum anodes, but they are just an, a different aluminum alloy than what the boat hulls are made of. So no matter what kind of a boat, if you are in seawater or brackish water, aluminum anodes are actually lighter and cheaper than zinc anodes. And uh, they have they are lower down in the galvanic scale, so they give you a little bit better protection as well. That's why we are using them. So I'm pretty pleased. It looks really good actually in here. Now let's measure that the anodes are working well. If you can, Sophie, if you can put this on the on the anode. Okay, that's good. Yeah, or then I can check. I'll just make sure that the propeller shaft is still um, isolated from the hull. So on an aluminum boat like this, the propeller shaft is isolated from the hull, so it's not electrically connected to the hull at all. But that's at least how it should be. Now that we know that the anode is connected to the hull, we can check between the anode and the prop shaft and there's no connection there at all so that's good and make sure that there's connection between the propeller anode and the prop shaft yeah we have good connection no resistance so that's pretty much it. Now we can take a quick look at how the boat is able to uh, sit upright here on the beach and how it's so easy to do this. So we basically have, well, we have like this small bit of um, kind of a keel, not really a keel, but I don't know what it's called. And that protects the propeller and the rudder and the boat is sitting on that all the way at the aft. But at the midsection of the boat and uh, quite close to the bow, you have like this flat bottom plate that starts here. It's around one meter wide, maybe around three feet. Goes all the way to the bow, it just gets narrower at the bow. The flat part is not that wide, so it doesn't really affect the hull shape. You can see that the hull is still nice and um, round. I'm sorry, my lens is getting a little bit foggy. And now we obviously have to send the board up. And that's how we can do this. This is the first time that we are doing this. Um, and uh, some people might say that that's kind of a waste to have a sender board and not beach the boat a little bit more often. But um, most people who have these kind of centerboard boats are of the opinion that the biggest advantage of the centerboard is that you can get the centerboard up when you are in rough seas going downwind because then the boat will not be like tripping on its keel. Keel boats they have this problem that when they speed down a wave the, the keel kind of acts as a brake and it becomes hard to control the boat, they get all squirrely and you are in risk of broaching. But here, when you get the center board up, you can see how the boat shape is really nice for just like, just like surfing down the waves. 
and then you have kind of like the rudder and the rear dagger board here at the back and those are gonna keep you steady and hold the course so that's the idea behind this type of a hull shape and hull construction with the center board the reason we have the rear dagger board there is that um, you can uh, push it lower down it actually goes maybe four or five feet almost one and a half meters further down so then it's gonna be even lower than the rudder and that that helps with just keeping a steady course and steering because the rudder is quite shallow but we actually have the rear dagger board always at the uppermost position pretty much like it is right now we've never needed to push it further down really we always have enough control with just the rudder I'm pretty happy that I don't know everything seems to be functioning pretty well the only thing that I worry about a little bit is that we've been quite slow going under engine using engine power lately and I thought that the bottom would be more dirty and that's why we are slow but turns out the bottom is not that dirty after all also the propeller looks good so I don't really know what's going on the propeller it spins freely the um, propeller bearing and everything everything looks perfect pretty much so I don't know if our propeller might have the false settings for the blades because you can adjust the angle of the blades or yeah I don't really know what's going on we're gonna have to see how much faster we are now that the boat that the bottom is completely clean but we're gonna maybe have to do some troubleshooting with the engine and the propeller it's 9 p.m. and we are floating at least approximately I think the water is higher than when than when we came in right because when we came in you could jump into the onto the ground from the bow but now not anymore so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let go of these lines these bow lines and just come and collect them tomorrow I'll just pull us uh, to this turn anchor. That's the easiest way now that there is no wind. All right, guys, I think we are good. We are in the middle of the bay now. There was a small bit of excitement there because the boat spun around around like 180 degrees as I was pulling the stern anchor up. This was a bit of a different kind of an episode. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. It was uh, good to get this done. It's a little bit of practice for us and just in case we need to do this um, in the future for some maintenance or so on. And I hope it was a good display for you for about like what this type of boats can do hope you enjoyed it if you really enjoyed it then consider um, becoming a patron the patron links are here up here and down in the video description um, what is it it's the middle of the night now so I can't remember the patron advantages yeah you get um, the, you get access to the whatsapp chat group and then you get ad free videos and some random updates from from me and Sohvi and um, so on and so forth and most of all your support helps me um, continue making these videos we are going to set anchor now and go to sleep bye bye see you all next time